this is Mario with MIA Microflight once again, and this is the MIA EC 1.25 RC Ultralight. This is a pusher design, and that's the uh, one at half the scale of this guy here. The larger one was started as a um, project uh, in uh, order to provide a kit that somebody that has uh, flown an Aero Scout and has broken that Air Scout can upgrade to this particular ultralight here and I say an upgrade because this model works on two cells uh, it's a lot more efficient, it's a lot lighter, it's a lot more durable so therefore that I consider an upgrade to the Air Scout. The Air Scout is a nice model but a lot of people are breaking that model in half and so uh, in view of that I decided to uh, do this model and I talk about that in another video how uh, that came about a little more in detail so you can see that video as well but this is a uh, video about these two models I wanted to showcase uh, the size proportions of these two here this is a it's going to be a um, 60 inch uh, wing span this one right now is 50 inch and that one is a uh, uh, 28 inch uh, wingspan now you adjusted the, the scale there on the wing in particularly uh, just so that I can have a little more lift on that little guy here because um, I do plan on putting a little extra weight there with some other uh, equipment that I will be equipment, equipping that with the models uh, fly on two cells lithium uh, polymer batteries or you can also fly them on two uh, two of the uh, lithium ions you know, the tubular cells in a pusher design it keeps the uh, all the uh, uh, propeller at the back pretty much there's not much you can do to these models here in a crash because uh, of the way they have been built the way I designed this model is all triangulated with carbon rods into a uh, into a sort of a pyramid shape at the front. That's just to create additional reinforcement and triangulation. It also has a center of rod that goes right through the uh, steering uh, block here at the front or the nose block. It goes all the way straight to the back. And that supports the uh, that supports the tail section. which uh, encompasses the stabilizer, the vertical and horizontal stabilizers, rudder and elevator. And I kept those very, very simple from a design perspective. Uh, this is not a split uh, elevator, it's a single piece elevator and you can see that in its for simplicity. It's very fluid as far as the, the control is concerned. Very fluid there, very fluid there. Uh, I do make my own hinges that I employ in some other ultralight uh, kits that I produce but I kept this one very simple this is just a, a one piece um, section that's been uh, uh, V grooved and it just uses the tape as a hinge this is color tape to provide a little more um, uh, aesthetical appeal but it's also to reinforce the quarter inch uh, foam board this is all foam board so this is a double double tape hinge. This is not going anywhere. As you can see there, it's uh, very, very nicely done. This is a camber wing. Uh, this works out beautifully in uh, RC ultralights of the type that I make. And so I kept uh, the same uh, formula there, just for simplicity. This still needs the, the servos. I'm working on the servo plate here. This will be a plate that will fit uh, between these two uh, diagonal rods and will uh, house also the uh, receiver. So all the receiver, the servos are at the front because these models, these pusher type models tend to be a little bit tail heavy because you're putting the weight at, uh, behind the, the center of gravity of the CG. So they uh, need to be um, designed a little bit longer at the front and so that uh, we can put the batteries and uh, most of the weight goes at the front, you know, to balance that out. 
the tail section here is also not that short and I made it uh, purposely a little bit longer just to give you a little more um, uh, more stability in um, in yaw and with that in mind that's the reason for the type of nose here a little bit longer nose for the weight as I was explaining to uh, bring the weight forward of the center of gravity or the CG being the since this is a high wing and all the way it is at the bottom is uh, mechanically self stabilizing you could actually fly this with no self stabilization in fact all my ultralights fly with no self stabilization no electronic assist uh, means uh, basically you just tweak your radio and set your uh, rates to um, uh, to whatever it's comfortable for your hands and uh, I do use Expo Exponential that uh, allows you to uh, have a little more uh, time uh, uh, in order to react to the controls and it just uh, works a lot better that way no electronic stabilization but because this one was done in view of the AeroScout as, a, as an upgrade to the AeroScout uh, you could actually use all the electronics from the AeroScout, all the servos, all the, uh, the the receiver in particular, which has the um, AS3X uh, technology, it has the uh, self-stabilization safe mode, and you have to set that in your transmitter and your um, via um, a dedicated switch to allow you to switch from um, self-stabilized mode or more expert mode. But pretty much, you know, this doesn't need all that, all those gizmos. You can just fly standard with uh, regular servos and a regular receiver, regular uh, four-channel transmitter. Uh, this one will have ailerons, and so I'm working on that as well. That little one can also have ailerons, but it, uh, for simplicity, it does not have and it will not have uh, ailerons. I am not going to be offering this as a kit, but this larger one here. This is just because I... I could do this uh, and I had the parts and uh, and typically I like doing these things uh, in, in different scales but we'll see we'll see what happens if people like this model then then maybe I'll bring this out as well because all the parts are basically done they're basically the same thing at half scale. Okay, so I decided to add this uh, portion of this video here because it shows this uh, uh, smaller version already set up with the equipment. I finished this last night and I flew it in my cul-de-sac. It flies really nice once all the angles are set up correctly. But it uses a, basically it just uses a standard receiver. This is the orange receivers that I use with my trusty orange uh, Hobby King transmitter of many years. And that's the reason why I use those because they're very compatible with, uh, with them. Uh, it uses a two cell 300 milliamp hour battery. These uh, servos came from um, Banggood. They're little tiny servos. Decided to give them a try. Uh, they're smaller than your uh, typical uh, micro servos. These are really uh, smaller than that. And uh, but they're metal gear, so they work really nice. The uh, motor is your. Uh, I believe these are 10 gram Hextronic uh, type motors. I like these motors a lot. I've been using these for many, many years in, in similar size uh, models. Uh, the only thing with this motor is that you need the, the wires. You, they need to be um, um, zip tied to uh, the post there because they tend to fray if you leave them loose. So that's the only caveat with that. But pretty much the model flew. It's complete and um, I'm looking forward to flying the larger one now that this one has been fully tested and uh, already set up with the uh, correct angles so that'll be next so this is just an addendum to the early part of this video Mario with MI Microflight, stay tuned for more okay well here we go Let's see if I can come in from that side yeah the wind is blowing from that end
That's windy. Hopefully my camera is capturing this. I'm not gonna fly too long because uh, it is very windy. And uh, I don't wanna risk it. Not, not a risk to the model, but I don't want to risk hitting anything here. Oh wow, that's picking up. The wind is really heavy now. Okay, land. Not the perfect landing, but good enough. <laughs> 